you say Bob was having a kidney removal? Uh, his wife, wife is? Wife is having a kidney removal? Yeah, that's what they were. Yeah, no, I don't have a So they're in Boston. Right. Do you have a number? Um, I can ask Jessica if she can look yeah. up and call her. Yeah. There we go. Oh, yes. There he is, right there. Oh. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. All right. So if you get his number now, then we'll all have it. Yeah, that's right. 207-357-1093. Yes. Don't forget it in the spring. Forget <laughs> it in the spring. I remember last time I think you forgot to go down. I think oh, I didn't go down. Oh. But I went down, but uh, I, you guys must have got there early or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys got there early this time, too, didn't you? Uh, yeah, my sister's right to be over. We were mine an hour early, which is a little ridiculous. Okay. Once you pass those out, we're ready. All right. Well, it's not the uh, Buffalo Board of Assessor meeting for. What is today? November 8th. November 8th, 8 o'clock. Um, we have a call and um, we, don't have a, we don't have an audience or anything. So I guess the first thing, uh, attachment, uh, what do you got for attachment? That's just the way the computer generates it. That's the minutes. So since the proof of this and then the attachment is All because right. it was generated on the computer. Okay. We have the minutes here. Um, everybody read the minutes, and if so, uh, what's the disposition of them? Motion to um, approve the minutes as presented. I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second for the minutes. Uh, all in favor? Okay. I wasn't here. Yes, I'm okay. I'm sick. All opposed, nobody opposed, okay, so pass. All right, moving on. Homestead applications. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven applications. And uh, Courtney says these are all for next year. Uh, not for this, there, there is more problems with them, so that none of them will be this year, they will be all for next year. Um, I cruised through them, I didn't see anything too often. Does anybody else have any comment on that? Well, the only thing I saw was the three of them. It, it requires a license to say... You don't have to have all of the... You don't have to have them no. all? No. If you can answer one or most more. of them. Section 1, if you if you check yes, or you can actually check everything in Section 1, okay. That that's really what matters. The section 3 is just basically supplementary. Okay. All right. All right. So we have, what did I say? 11. 11. I just had a couple questions too. I don't think okay. Right now. Um, first question is the first one, Calandra, um, uh, just for confirmation, a revocable trust is uh, eligible. Trust is okay. Revocable trust is okay. Revocable trust is okay. The second one, Clough. Rebecca Clough. Can you please help me understand it's dated 2022? Yep, um, there's a note up at the top. The deed was transferred to her, I believe, from her parents or a relative in 22. So we had to hold it a year because you have to claim that as a homestead for a year in order to be eligible. It's only for 12 months. So, so as she's many applying for next year 23 then. Yeah. Yes, right. we she just held she... it typically as a courtesy. We'll hold it for somebody so they don't have to come to try to remember to come back in and then fill it out. But she was aware that she couldn't get it for this position. So her year is, what's what's the year date? Um, September 2023 or what's her, when she put this in June 2022 was... So it would be eligible in June of 23, so we're approving it now for next year. Okay, so we're assuming that that's when her 12 months started. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, fourth one, James and Patricia. Yep, we close. Yep. Their um, application came in prior to April 1st of 2023? Yeah, uh, they were building their house, so it wasn't complete. They hadn't been in it a year. They had come in and filled out, I believe, a veterans last year. <coughs> they were aware they weren't eligible for the homestead, um, and now they are. And in the future, too, I didn't even think of that. I can leave a note on these so it's a little bit easier. 
Yeah, I understand because yeah, theirs was held because their house wasn't complete and they haven't been there a year when they filled us out. So what's what when does your year conclude? Um, it would have been after April first of this year. Okay. That kind of would be nice. Okay, yeah, I can put a note yeah. on the one forward. Okay, that's great. Thank you. And once you guys process these, we put the year the acceptance. And you all have 24, the map and lot, and the account number on it. So, you know, three years down the road, we want to remember. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, one last question. The second to last question. Um, yeah, yeah. I think actually in the, ta in the on the tax commitment, it was uh, in the name of the trustees of the Buck Family Trust um, in care of uh, Catherine Preston. So I didn't know if that qualified for eligibility as a family trust. We'll have to check and see. Um, this was a big. Uh, this was an issue at. Normally, if, even if it's, if it's a revocable trust and the trustees are the two people that live there, it's very clear. Yeah. I had a case in I know in the towns that trustees were the children, the parents lived there, but the deed transferring the property didn't really list them as being um, the responsible parties. So we can ask the family to give us the, a copy of the entire trust to see where in writing she's responsible personally for that. Um, and then we'll assume that that's okay. And if not, when we have a, once we get a confirmation, we'll have, at our next meeting we'll bring up the fact that we're going to have to deny it. So we'll take that one out. I would, I would take that okay. one out. Okay. 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 Thank yeah. you. That was all questions. All right. So out of the eleven, we've got ten, um, and we're going to remove uh, the one for uh, Preston. Catherine Preston. Uh, what's your disposition? I'll make that motion with pulling out the Preston. And the confirmation of the other ten? Yes. And we have a motion and we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any uh, uh, conversation on it? Okay. All right. Uh, all those in favor? All those opposed? Motion passed. That exemption. We have three of them. Jesse Condy, George Hayes, and James Moore. Um, they're all veterans, it looks like, and they're all on the release. Discharge, it looks like. Now, are these for this year? Uh, upcoming for 24. Upcoming for 24, so they're actually for next year. So I wasn't aware of this, so veterans get a discount? They have a... You get an, exempt, an exemption like a homestead. Yeah. Okay. But you got to be 62, served during a war period, or be 100% stable, service to non-service connected. Okay. It's really too bad. It's only $6,000 without it. It isn't much. So that's right. So that, that was just one confirmation, too. So the first application, uh, Jesse, Connie, you know, He's not 62, but it appears that he has the paperwork that he's 100% disabled. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they did. From the bottom of the second page. I would do the same thing. Yeah. 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 So. yeah, the letter, the letter yeah. states that, right? Yeah. yeah. And we code them differently, so that the different the different reimbursement from the state for somebody who is 100% service connected, because when the law was enacted, they weren't eligible. Now that they are, it's considered a new exemption, so we get a bigger reimbursement on this than we do in a regular veteran. We keep track of it separately. Yep. All right. Uh, they all look in order, don't they? They do. They, look, yeah. they all look. But what I look when I look for them, I look to see if they're on discharge. Yeah. 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 So I will make the motion to accept. Okay, we have a motion to accept. And, and we have a second. Any uh, conversation? All right. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor? All those opposed? And so let's get to the Now these here, make sure that... Yeah, I don't like the DD. Make sure like that... that uh, actually, do you guys want to pass them down and then I yeah. can just... Yeah, make sure it's the box when we're... She right. gets them back. Yeah, yeah. That's the one thing that is, um, in our office, is not public. 
Nobody can come in and ask to see those, but I'll see this back to them. Yeah. All of that information so for the vault. veterans needs to be because of the social security numbers and stuff like that. Yeah, and, then, and then we, um, just uh, just for with the new website, all this public information that goes up, they can see the attachments. So that's um, the way. veterans one they can? I don't know. You just okay, I'll check into it. Yeah, uh, but I have them blacking out to the social security numbers on it. Oh, you want those? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I posted it because it's yeah. generated in the But I can check. Oh, uh, the So what you're looking at is all, all four corners that have a GPS? Yep, yep. Meets and bounds description was yep. there. They yep. didn't put a, a contrary acreage amount in the deed, so we didn't really catch it, didn't really pick up on it. So he provided that as proof. So. All right. Um, then number two? Number two is just in the, a, a, a homestead exemption that we came in, came in just before April 1st. Or, just in the Regine and Mitchell Benedict, Chapman Street, dated March, March 27th of 2023. We just missed it. So. Okay, and number three. Well, number three is, um, yeah, he, we went out there and picked up, we went out there to follow up on a building permit. And there's a pool and a patio out back and a pool shed. Part of the pool shed living space, like the changing room. Part of it is just shed shed. I think we had the whole thing as like a living room, living space, changing room kind of thing. So this is to correct the to correct the assessment of the building. We've had an awful lot of well, Fort Benson's had an awful lot of construction this year. Are we we uh, looking at the aspect of the completion? What well, I want to say, not completion, but the where they're at in the construction of the, of the homes, because I can think of five or six right now that are still under construction. Yeah. You know? yeah. We we you know we wait we go out right around that April first deadline. Oh, okay. It's just it's kind of a it's a waste of resource to go out there now knowing we have to go back mm -hmm. unless they, unless they ask us to come out specifically we will. Yeah. But we save up all the building permits and anything that wasn't done last year. Yeah. So um, well, yeah, so we went to this place. You look at the building, it's one building, and there's a dividing wall, living space, no living space. We thought it was all living space. Um, so we retracted it. Yeah. Seems like an awful lot of A-frames are going up. It's a busy town. Yeah. Not yeah. enough work, it's a busy town. Yeah. And so are we a little bit more organized now with the status of the building permits? Yeah. Is there a worksheet? Is yeah. there a spreadsheet yes. or something now that's being... It was a, it was a bit of a... Well, first year doing the spring work here. Everything's new to us, so we don't know exactly what's what. Right, right. Um, and then we had a little bit of, we had a little bit of um, 
help getting the code enforcement officer to understand that we've got to be specific on these sublots. You know, you get a new subdivision, 12 new lots and 10 new houses, a lot of building permits are taken out by the builder's name, which is very common. Really hard to make sure we get the right building on the right lots. We pretty much did. Uh, we didn't have any yeah, abatement. Yeah, I think the but only one that gave us a headache was up off, like, there's a Taylor Smith Road that Something has a like bunch that. of different, like, uh, subdivisions and then, like, an extension off the subdivision. So some That's of those... That's tricky. Yeah. And yeah, we, uh, we, brand new, we, we burned a lot of time making sure we had it right. But now I explain to everybody how important it is to get the specific information on that. That's what we like all of our ownership, you know, our deed ownership updated before we go out there. At least we'll have the right name on the card. So... Yeah, so I, you know, I, was, I was afraid we was going to have, it's a hustle file. I mean, we try, we make a mistake, whatever. But so far, we haven't, and they would have come in by now, I would think. So, and every day that we visited last year, we keep a copy of it in a folder room to, for our rechecks, plus the building permit list. But we'll be in good shape. That's great. Thank you. All right, so we've got three abatements. I make a motion to accept. Okay, we have a motion to accept. Second. And we have a second. Uh, Um, yep, all right. And all those in favor for the motion? Yes, step go ahead. That'll be yeah. fine, Ron. Thank you. Uh, this is going to be a quick meeting. Uh, well, you guys are signing that. You want me to go over other business? Yes. Okay. Um, Sharon sent me this uh, MMA class assessing for non-assessors. She was curious if anybody would be interested. It's via Zoom, so you can do it from your living room if you'd like to go um, on Thursday, November 16th. Um, if you're interested, just let me or Sharon know so we can get you signed up. Um, and then the other thing is from the State of Maine Revenue Services. This came via certified yesterday. Uh, that's why it wasn't in your packets. Um, from the state explaining that, um, that was several a, municipalities are in compliance. I'm assuming that was a common gift from my last manager. Well, I thought, you know what, honestly, I thought that too, but every one yeah. of my clients got one. Yeah. Every so, town got one. Yeah, Rob explained this because I was like, uh oh, but he said yeah. that everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody, Everybody who's not doing it called me up and they were in panic. This is my personal opinion. This is nothing more than a nag letter from the state reminding us of our responsibility. They, they, we've already talked about what they do to a town that doesn't assess personal property. They add in value to the state evaluation, it affects the county tax, the school tax. They can't mandate that we do anything. They can just kind of like wagging your finger at somebody. Everybody got it for whatever reason, and um, yes. I don't. You, you know, I, I know the board's position, and this shouldn't change your your view on anything. It's nothing's going to come with it. Okay. And I was going to say, passing on the information. It's not not even a. Can you take the time to do a signature? No, <laughs> so no. it was a bulk letter. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that's um, pretty much all I've got for communication. No other business? I have a few other business. Okay. <laughs> so, timing wise, is going to be such a thing. So, we had a mobile home, just a building only tax bill. And they had to pay tax in four years, and then they demolished it and didn't let us know. So, because it was more than a one year abatement, I instructed the manager to just go to the board and ask for the selectmen, because they can write it off as uncollectible. They can, and they can write off this year's as uncollectible. So instead of having two boards have two votes, the board of selectmen said, yes, we're going to forgive the taxes because there's nothing to lean, nothing exists. And it's only one box, something like that. Um, yeah. But after the selectmen voted on it, they can't sign an abatement. But we didn't get, we didn't get it on the abatement list today. So I'm gonna, it'll be the first thing on the list for our next meeting, just as a you know, dotting all the I's, crossing all the T's kind of thing. I instructed uh, Jeff to go ahead and process the abatement because the selectman said it's uncollectible. But we, there has to be an abatement form, and you being the board will have to sign it, but that's the only thing. Okay. So for your next meeting, that's so all. So it's kind of like, oh, by the way. Yep, yeah. oh, by the way. So yeah. that's, um, and the other thing is kind of the same, oh, by the way, we have three taxpayers that are in the state's deferral program where the state pays your taxes for you. 
and then upon your death, loss of homestead status or salary, you pay the state back plus interest. Not a good program. But what we found out is um, the, the St. Pierre's, they have more than 10 acres and they can only get taxes paid on the house in 10 acres. So the state is adamant, I just got this today, the state is adamant that we send these people two bills. One to the St. Pierre's under the tax deferral program, send it to the state, and a second tax bill for all the acres they own above 10. It's not a separate lot, however we value the land, you know, one acre house lot, five acres of real land, one, whatever acres of excess land are above 10 will be their tax bill responsibility. But the state won't pay a bill if it's not 100% right, so they're kind of pushing back. Timing is such that the state is on just to get this done, so if it's okay with you, we'll cut in front of the horse today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create two assessments. Basically, we're going to have two supplementals. I'm going to prepare that for the state. And at our next meeting, we'll just go ahead and again nod our head and say, yep, process the abatement of the original bill and process the supplementals post-processing. Um, so the state will be happy and we'll get our money. Is that okay with everybody? The so only, we're waiting another month. The, the only problem I see with that is on the excess of acreage. If they were in the deferred payment to start with, it would indicate to me that they were unable to pay taxes. Or, and how are they going to pay the taxes on the over acreage? Yeah, I know. But, but that's, the only, that's the only part of the law that's eligible for that relief. Yeah. So how much would that be? I, have, I Honestly, I don't even know how many acres they have. Yeah. But again, the, the assessment will be exactly the same. We're just going to chunk yeah. it off into two pieces. So okay. I would hope that they can. I can see a, um, maybe a problem coming in. Yeah. It gets really convoluted because, well, the stats has changed a bit. When you went into this program, you couldn't be late in your taxes. You couldn't have a tax lien on your property. So they don't pay the taxes on the extra acres over 10. That may disqualify them from this program, but that's all that, that's between them and the state. But I, see the, I can see the, the issue. Yeah, well, it could be that between them and the state, but if the state rejects it, then it's going to be our problem. Just because if they don't, well, only that we'll have a, a taxpayer that can't afford the, yeah. the tax amount, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so those those are for next month. And yes, for next month, right? Like I said, I just, the timing, I just want to get it all taken care of. You don't want to do that program? But you don't want to do that program. <coughs> no. no, it's yeah. similar to like, kind of like a reverse number. It is. Right? Yeah, it's not but good. the killer is the interest for the tax that they pay for you is based on the maximum amount of interest a town can charge for any pay tax. It's eight percent this year. It's a bad, bad idea. Yeah. But it's a you know it's like a fail safe. When all else fails, it's going to get them some sort of relief. And we get paid, so that's all we get. All right. Those are the two things that I had extra and above. So does any board member have anything? I just have a couple of questions. Yep. Was um, how was the letter received from the people, the applicants that put in for the stabilization program that's no longer going to be happening? I sent them out to everybody, and I haven't heard one thing. Um, I don't know about up front if they've maybe heard something, but nobody is contacting me directly about it. Yeah. I, I think a, I think a lot of people knew. Yeah. I think yeah. they made it pretty well. No, but thank you for giving it out. Yeah. It helps. Um, I did go back through. Um, my meeting minutes and such, and I did find a remote policy for the board of assessors mm -hmm. um, in May of 2022. So, if, as long as we have it in the files, or yeah, yeah, it's the same one for across the boards. Yeah, yeah, we were a little bit uh, later than the rest of the boards. Yeah, so um, because I think we had that question for Bob, like, oh, uh, maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Speaking of the workshop um, for education, are there any updates to the assessor books that I know you said that got us the big, the big like the MMA books. one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you know one? what year that one was? Um, was about two years ago, we got that. I don't think there's been a new one because I got one of when I started, and I don't, I haven't seen anything about a new one since 2019. I don't think there has been, but I can look at it. You can go online to MMA and, and then. And because they have that, they have that book online. Um, and it may be helpful too, because I don't think Ron or 
George, you guys don't have one, right? Never made book. No. Like, uh, tax and stuff. So we can try to get you guys copies of those too. Yeah. yeah. It's a nice reference. Yeah. If you have questions on like finance yeah. and yeah. 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 And and then um, Sharon had to the select then had distributed a memo from the main assessors organization of the 2023 property law changes. Um, um, it's just what? The 2023 property law changes. And I just think about that. Yeah, that's the, it was kind of good. I haven't seen what is, what is that about? It just has the different changes. Bob, if you want to give it to me. Yeah, the farmland, farmland penalty. It's been a different kind of calculation than tree growth and open space. They made them all the same. Now they put it back to the other five years back taxes. Um, changes to who qualifies for homesteading veterans. Um, it, it really has to be a, an individual, not an entity. We get the um, irrevocable, irrevocable trust issue that we talked about. They're trying to clean some of that up. But nothing really is shattering for us. Just, yeah. just the farmland thing. Which, Makes a big difference to something that families. And I don't know if through our foreclosure program, if some of those policies need to be updated with regards to sale. So check with them. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That one wasn't a surprise. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, the top one just talks about the two options now that stabilization the stabilization program is gone. No, that was not. They wrote that out last. Right. Okay. This, this year or last year? This year. This year. This, year. this, year. this all coming now because once the session is ended, it's 90 days for bills yeah. to come along. Yeah. Um, and the 90 days was up a couple weeks ago. And this is uh, the biggest thing. All right, anybody have anything else? I'll entertain a motion to uh, adjourn. I'll make a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? That's Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next month, same time, right? Yep. Same, same, first, yep. same time, same first place. Thursday, yeah. Yeah. How's Sorry. it? You're coming in on a year, right? Almost? No. I know. It's been over a year. Over a year. Over a year. Happy yeah, Cody, if you can get a copy of those, of the, uh, Thank you guys. Thank you. 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 Thank you.